Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is now on digital, revealing all kinds of new interesting VFX details, specifically some really cool stuff about Groot that was just too easy to miss when we first saw it in theaters. I had a chance to sit down with two of the frame store VFX artists who worked on this film, Alexei Wajbro and Stefan Naze, who confirmed some fascinating visual elements in the design of these characters. I'm gonna break it all down for you. Now, I dive deep into the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy on the Deep Dive channel, part of our growing network that includes this main channel and our newest channel, The Break Room. Subscribe to all three and support our network with a scroll inspired shirt from nerdriot.shop. Okay, recently James Gunn confirmed a longtime mystery about Groot's origin teased nine years ago in the very first Guardians of the Galaxy film, How Did Groot and Rocket Meet? And Groot's booking screen on Xandar in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, one of his associates was named Tibius Lark, someone James Gunn hinted would be explored in a future film, but as of Guardians Volume 3, we have never met him. But now, Gunn confirmed on threads that he did write storyboard, location scout, and shot test footage for a short film film, a piece of which was shown in the footage screen at Comic-Con last summer that would have been part of Guardians Volume 3 and would have shown Rocket, Groot, and someone named Tibius Lark imprisoned in a deep well in the ground. Tibius was dying and had been caring for Groot for years. He was a former zookeeper in a shitty galactic zoo where Groot had been on an exhibit and Tibius saved Groot. But as Tibius died, he made Rocket promise to take care of Groot. And then Rocket realized Tibius's bottom half was robotic and the guards above the well would have seen Groot bursting out of the ground and Rocket on his shoulder and in Rocket's hands would be a machine gun made from Tibius Lark's body. I think this is a fascinating story, and I share it with you because when you rewatch Guardians Volume 3, you can totally see elements of this backstory coded into the VFX animation throughout the film. Let's start with Groot. I specifically asked the frame store artists about- And then we had all those discussions in terms of all the barks and basically all the vines, how they should move. The idea was not to feel any stretch. You see that because it's it's done with wood, so that's something you want to feel basically when you have like Groot uh, basically acting. Also, the idea was really to feel like something quite sophisticated, but not too distracting. The idea was not to have all the pieces moving all over the place. Yeah, so Stefan explains how Groot's branches aren't stretchy or elastic, but really are just unfurling pieces of himself that are folded up and rolled up inside of his chest. Why did they make this distinction? Well, because if you were to make Groot's branches too elastic, they would start to look snaky, like bungee cords, with a mind of their own. But by keeping the branches more rigid, they feel like extensions of Groot himself, each fiber moving as an intentional decision by Groot. And knowing this, it makes the No Sleep Till Brooklyn one especially fun to rewatch, especially now in high def, where you can really go through frame by frame to see all the little things they hid in there. Like watch Groot in a sequence. For the early part of the sequence, we really just follow Groot's branch arm as it swats two of the Hellspawn soldiers, and then for the third, stuffs the arm down his throat and then grows sharp branches out of the flesh, killing him from the inside out. Then Groot keeps this same arm extended longer than he should. Why does he do that? Well, it's to give Mantis time to swing from the branch and then latch onto the shoulders of the guard in the foreground and then flip that guy backward back into Groot's arm to clothesline him. And you can hear the guard's bones breaking when he hits Groot's arm. <laughs> It's just such great choreography. And if Groot's arms were snaky and elastic for this, they wouldn't have had the weight or the rigidity or the resistance required for all of these moves. And then it's part Groot takes a stab to the torso, but Rocket jumps on that Hellspawn's head to shoot him, then hops on Groot's shoulders, giving us a callback to the kiln sequence in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And then Rocket runs down Groot's arm as it grows down this corridor. Once the arm reaches its growth limit, Groot flips Rocket in the air, giving Rocket some height in this hero moment as Rocket laughs in delight. <laughs> So Groot's branches always represent strength and confidence and supporting his friends, not elastic cheating or trying to bend its way around the rules of nature. We also see this earlier in the movie, in the shot when Groot leaps out of the window to catch Quill and make wings. <laughs> And if you watch this closely, you realize it's not just the branches that make the wings, it's the leaves growing off of the branches that provide the lightweight wind resistance to function as a true parachute. It's really impressive to think how these VFX artists really thought all this anatomy through. And thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Here at New Rockstars, we like to figure out what makes movies work, go frame by frame to figure out what's really going on. But when we need insight on what's really going on with ourselves, we use BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you 
you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, just answer a few questions about what you're looking for from therapy and what your preferences are. BetterHelp will then match you with a therapist from their network that's right for you. After that, talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. BetterHelp gives you the same level of professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash New Rockstars. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash New Rockstars for 10% off your first month of therapy. Now, the Hellspawn characters, their lower halves are robotic. And obviously, that's also part of the design of the co-occupants of Rocket's Batch 89 cage. And I think their visual similarity to what James Gunn had in mind for Tibius Lark might be why the Lark backstory was removed from the film. It could have just been he didn't want people to think the two characters were connected, or that Tibius Lark was also a creation of Herbert Wyndham. James Gunn shared some sketches containing new details about Lila, Floor, and Teefs that their numbers are, respectively, for Lila, 89Q12, for Floor, 89J50, which is later changed to 89L06, and then for Teefs, 89A95. In the notes, you can also see that James Gunn wrote, for Floor, metal jaw moves, scrapes on self when talks. That could be why Floor speaks so childishly. Originally, whenever she talked, her metal jaw was going to scrape her body. Mask, eyes, face, mouth. Does it work? Now, I asked the frame store artists about this and how they chose the exact look of things like Teeth's motorized eyelids or Floor's mouth. For the implants, they were there also in the in the original concept, but it's a, it's a sketch. So these guys are doing experiments and they take whatever they have next to them. It could be an old pipe, it could be an old rotor, it could be, and we a bit MacGyver it. And so we take that and, and we find references of old motor of plane or anything we have and we use that as reference to make them an old speaker for the mouse of floor. Oh my God. He went on to describe how they went back to look at the implants on Rocket's back in the first Guardians of the Galaxy and from that worked backwards to justify how a quadruped animal would need to be given a new backbone and shoulder blades to pull his arms back so that he could walk upright. Essentially, they had to play God and put themselves in the headspace of the high evolutionary to rethink how these animals would move a different way with practical parts swapped in. Now, a deleted scene that came out last week confirmed that the High Evolutionary did survive the final battle and that he was locked up in a prison cell on Nowhere by Rocket. And we pointed out in a past video that you can see the exact moment that Drax carries him off the exploding ship. And now in high resolution, you can see the High Evolutionary draped over Drax's shoulder. But that's not the only cool detail hidden in this moment. Alexi from Frame Store pointed out other fun details that they threw in among the animals flocking off this ship. If you look at the sequence, you have a monkey on top of a tapir, you have some <laughs> turtles on top of another tapir, like you have animals on top, animals. So on all of these sequences, there is little story of animals continuity between the shots. Animals on top of animals. Yeah, you can definitely see a monkey riding a taper here. And then on some other tapers in the background, turtles are riding them. And as Cosmo, the space dog, struggles to keep the bridge open, you can see one of those little turtles just slowly making its way across the grate. I love these animals working together because it shows how these are not lower life forms. They're just all animals capable of cooperation and teamwork. There are so many new details like this that we're discovering in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So here's the plan. We are going to do a brief breakdown of this film coming out on this channel sometime this month. Remember to subscribe to all three of our channels and support us by grabbing some merch at nerdriot.shop. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVoss, and we'll see you next time, everybody. Bye.